by the same people who funded the Bolshevik communists in Russia. By using the goal of world peace as a bait, the CFR was able to form the world's first League of Nations, which was meant to form a multinational army to enforce the will of its diplomatic representatives to protect the world from future uprisings by mad tyrants. The League of Nations was so odious a concept, the U.S. Congress never ratified U.S. membership in it, and insofar as it professed to offer global peace, it failed to prevent the Great Depression or the consequences thereof in the form of World War II. By the beginning of World War II, the Federal Reserve Central Bank of the USA had grown large enough to privately fund both sides of the war, and thus they paid for the weapons of both the Allies and the Axis powers, and so both went into debt to them. The Nazis arose in Germany and sought to conquer and unify Europe into a New Age occult version of the old Holy Roman Empire of Catholic Christendom. The result of their attempt at such and defeat at the hands of the USA and its allies was the creation of the nation of Israel by reallocation of land assets conquered by the Axis powers tied to Germany, then reconquered by US and allied forces in the Middle East, annexing nearly all of Palestine, including the Holy Lands around Jerusalem. Just as the theft of the Holy Land from the indigenous Muslim Arabs when Palestine was repopulated as Israel was meant to, and did, accomplish the replacement of the German Third Reich with an equally powerful Nazi superstate centered in the Middle East, so too did World War II end by replacing the League of Nations with the United Nations, wherein the U.S. has a permanent seat on the five-member Security Council. The United Nations is, to its member nation-states, what Aleister Crowley's OTO Bund was to all the Jacobin Freemasonic lodges, networking them together under the Illuminati and then reshaping their goals to match those of the Illuminati protocols. It is a sham attempt toward global governance by a single dictator, meant to prove by false flag attack that democracy inevitably fails. It is quite lucky for those of us who, like you and I are now, are researching conspiracy theories, that those in the true and real conspiracy are such revolting, idiotic dolts. All the flags they have invented have been only white or yellow and blue. Consider the League of Nations flag showing a white pentagram inside a blue pentagram inside a blue outlined pentagon on a blank white field. The pentagram, as we established during the discussion on the alchemical Rosicrucians, symbolizes humanity as our two legs, two arms, and head. One iteration up the number of stellations from the pentagram on the flag of the League of Nations is the hexagram on the flag of the nation of Israel, shown here also as blue on white and symbolizing the Star of David, which itself was meant to signify the dimensions of the Ark used as the foundation for the architectural designs for the first temple constructed by King Solomon. The logo of NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which provides the army of Europe when called upon by the UN, just as the Pentagon controls the US Army, shows a white, target-shaped star of four cardinal compass points on a blue field. The logo of the European Union, the EU, shows a circle of 12 pentagram stars in yellow on a field of blue. The EU has its own currency and has bloodlessly unified most of Europe over the last 50 years, just as the American Revolutionary War unified the British colonies into the United States some 200 years before. Finally, the logo of the United Nations, the UN, 
is a white globe seen from above the North Pole surrounded by twin white olive branches on a blue field. The use of the color blue is meant to symbolize world peace throughout all these flags, and all these organizations were started by cowardly, conspiratorial, central bank owners. We might look for a suitable name for the conspirators who rule from behind the scenes today, and who shape and control all events of consequence on the world stage, and settle for Nazis, since that is the name of the philosophy they all, from the German Illuminati to the U.S. neocons today, worship and adhere to. However, it is more important to remember that these mere Nazi religion idiots now wield the same sum of power always sought after by the secret conspirators and the assassins who killed Julius Caesar and Jesus Christ no less so than Russian Tsar Nicholas Romanov and U.S. President John Kennedy. The same mindset possessed the assassin senators who killed Julius Caesar as those men now in power who seek to lop the head off of anyone who sticks their neck up above the poverty line of lowest possible personal power. The same secret order of men that they formed then exists now and its members remain privy to all the plans behind politics and religion that comprise all significant events on the world stage today. We call them simply the conspiracy. Past Politics 101b Symbolism of the U.S. Great Seal if a picture says a thousand words, we can tell very much even from a simple symbol. The Great Seal of the United States Democratic Republic, designed by its founders who drafted the Constitution for its government, is meant to symbolize a great many images in a small, concise form. Although we see it every day on money nowadays, its symbolism seems to mean very little to most of us although it was designed to mean very much by those who drafted it. However, as we have seen, the U.S. Great Seal is only one image, potentially symbolic of Satan as the demiurge or anti-god, out of hundreds and thousands of others that can be seen to stand for the thoughts of different groups at different times. Thus, what we can learn from the U.S. Great Seal, we must see in historical context and only of being true from the point of view of those who created it, that is, the founders of the United States Democratic Republic form of government. So, to study the Great Seal of the United States, we begin by examining the front side of it first, and by studying the symbolism of its imagery in both historical religious and political context. To begin examining the front side of the Great Seal, we study the image of the bald eagle in flight, behind the American flag shield, gripping in one talon a quiver of arrows, and in the other a branch of olive leaves, and holding in its beak a banner reading E Pluribus Unum. The overall image connotes the aerial strength of U.S. national spirit in the form of the national bird behind the American flag shield. The head of this image of the bald eagle on the front of the U.S. Great Seal augments this assessment of the prowess and power of this symbol of national unity in the form of an expression of military might. Its expression of stern severity is unmistakable in its grim visage. However, at the back of the bald eagle's head, there is one tussled feather must messily on his head. This is where the mysterious origins of this symbol begin being implied. The upright feather on the dorsal crest of a bird of prey's fledged scalp has long represented the sole distinguishing characteristic trait of the phoenix, a mythical symbol of the fire bird, the common chicken hawk falcon, or the wild turkey buzzard eagle. 
The head feather of the sunbird is upturned uniquely when it is meant to symbolize the phoenix, a symbol of fire from Dark Ages alchemy appropriated from Greek myths. Originally, this zoomorph in Greek myths referred to a southern hemisphere constellation, or star pattern, visible only in the southern hemisphere night sky. From Greece, the phoenix would have been the southernmost constellation visible in the southern night sky. Hence, it was symbolic of the course taken by the sun over the duration of the day, from dawn till dusk, and the apparently miraculous rebirth of the sun in the east at dawn following night when it sets in the west. The phoenix, thus, was also a symbol of death and resurrection, alike the snake that sheds its skin. In its use in Dark Ages alchemy, the phoenix was portrayed as double-headed to refer to a peculiar fable involving a full-fledged eagle and an eagle whose head feathers never grew in and who remained bald. There is much mystery that remains even now about the meanings of alchemical symbolism. However, there remain strong ties within alchemical art between the phoenix and the serpent as an Ouroboros, a snake eating its own tail. Despite its murky origins in alchemical symbolism during the European Dark Ages, the double-headed eagle appears again in the heraldic shield of the Habsburg family, who reigned as the Holy Roman Emperors from the end of the Dark Ages until the early 20th century, when they were unseated during World War I. The double-headed eagle appears here above the Habsburg family crest, from a low-relief carving in stone. We see the same double-headed eagle in the coat of arms of the Russian Tsar Romanov's family crest. The appearance in both crests is superior to the shield of the heraldic coat of arms of the double-headed phoenix, seen here in black, indicates the alliance between the Habsburg and Romanov families that posed a threat to the power structure desired by the CFR in funding the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia. At the time of the signing of the American Declaration of Independence from rule by Great Britain, the Habsburgs were seen as unpopular monarchs who supported the old world government of papal Christendom and who had funded the Rothschild dynasty of international bankers to acquire majority shares in all holdings traded on the stock markets of Europe. The Rothschilds were seen as particularly odious to the public interest by the time of the Nazis, and this unpopular point of view on them aided and assisted in allowing the Holocaust to come about, wherein the Nazis slaughtered six million so-called Jews across Europe. However, at the time of the founding of America as a democratic republic by the original founding fathers who drafted the constitution of its government, the Trenchard design for the Great Seal of the U.S. showed only a single-headed eagle in mid-flight behind a shield marked by the 13 vertical red and white stripes and a horizontal blue field of the American flag. The bald eagle, as has been indicated, represented the younger, or unfledged, alchemical phoenix. The double-headed eagle image would appear again later in the symbol of the 33rd degree commandery of the Scottish Rite of Free and Accepted Masonry. The Scottish Rite came during the 19th century to supplant the British York Rite practiced by the Founding Fathers the century before. By the beginning of the 20th century, Scottish Rite was the dominant Masonic Rite in America. The Scottish Rite was designed around the time of the American Civil War and showed an eagle with wings lowered to signify the southern and an eagle with wings raised the northern jurisdictions during the Civil War between the Northern Union and Southern Rebel States. It was not until after the Civil War this image was shown as a double-headed bald eagle wearing a single crown. 